Hi, class. This is Professor Barry. So I just I just want to uh, take this time just to say so sorry. I apologize for my internet issues this morning and afternoon. Today I want to share with you. Um, here's my lesson that we would have talked a little bit more about regarding Christian marriage and burial. So make sure that you have your book. This week's lesson comes from chapter five, Christian worship through the life cycle, and it's pages 129, 127 to 129 and 139 to 143. So I'm going to pull up our lesson. Um, you may be wondering like, well, what does this have to do with Christian worship? So here's the thing, um, ceremonies, those things that are done within a um, the Christian worship setting, those things have to deal with worship. Um, those things have to do with how the person um, believes and expresses their belief through a particular action. And that can be through marriage and through burial. So we'll talk about those uh, briefly here. So we're here in chapter five, so make sure you're following along with me. I'm sure in our lifetime we have been to a, a wedding and a funeral and uh, they are a part of life, but let's look and see how they are a part of worship. The marriage ceremony began even before formal Christianity began. So it has been in existence in the Old Testament as well as New Testament. And um, well, you know, it is meant to be a commitment between two individuals. Now, something that's really interesting in Mediterranean history, um, as you look into biblical writings, when people were married, they were much younger than what we are today. And even in the biblical story of the biblical narrative of Jesus, Mary, uh, was thought to kind of been like a teenager uh, age. So probably um, uh, theologians say that she could have been around 13 years old. Now in our construct, we would say that's that's a child. That's a that's a teenager. She needs to be in school or he needs to be in school. They weren't living like that. 11 or 12 years old. Uh, remember, people just did not live long. Um, people, if you were healthy enough to live into your 30s or 40s, you were considered an old person. But, you know, they uh, died of things that we, you know, take medicine for and keep on getting up. So um, remember, marriages were arranged at that time. You didn't date and find a spouse. As we said earlier, history reveals from the Old and New Testament that brides, the lady wore some type of veil. And a veil is really important in the Bible because it, it symbolizes so many things. So this, it symbolizes her innocence, <clears throat> excuse me, her innocence as well. And also what we found in history is that the bride had attendance, and that's what we would call now bridesmaids. And those attendants, those female attendants would kind of wear the, the same dress or a similar dress as the bride would. You see that today. So the bridesmaids, we, you know, we wear the same dresses or the same color dress and assist the bride on her day. The other thing that we found in marriage ceremonies, remember y'all, this is before Christianity was even thought about the groom would place a ring on the bride's fourth finger and that is still where we wear our wedding rings in history so if we push a little bit in towards the new testament in roman cultures so remember in the new testament we're dealing with this area of rome brides were even at that time carried over the threshold by the groom still hear about that Bridesmaids were still dressed similar, similarly to the bride, and there was still this exchange of rings. Remember, we talked about wedding receptions, uh, lots of food, uh, sometimes, you know, drinks and things like that. But we 
dance and we have a good time. It is a celebration. It is a party like atmosphere. Well, that was instituted also in Roman culture. And so uh, we still see that today. There's no wedding reception I've been to without any food. What was the point? Guests threw walnuts or flower petals or water, sprinkled water on the couple. And this uh, symbolized fertility. So as we as we get into culture, the purpose also of marriage was to have children, you know, to uh, have a foundation of a family. And so they wanted the culture expected or a uh, hope that the couple would be fertile and have children. And so as we spoke on our telephone time today that in modern times, you don't see it as much so much now is that uh, people will throw rice, uh, um, confetti, or maybe some type, you know, that uh, special confetti that you kind of throw at them. I've seen that. I've been to a wedding where we blew bubbles. Um, so there's there's something that kind of symbolizes those things that we do. That that goes all the way back to Roman culture. All right, so let's go back to Jewish weddings. So you remember last week when we talked about communion, it had a strong foundation of the Jewish Passover. And so Jewish weddings in the Old Testament, still the same thing. The bride wore a veil. The bride had attendants. There were also the men, the, uh, excuse me, the groom had 10 men that were uh, used to assist him and they were also going to be witnesses to validate that this marriage was legit. The prayers and blessings were spoken over the couple from uh, the family. Well, there's something really interesting that I want you to see in this picture. Um, there were rituals done in Jewish weddings. And remember, as we said last week, the Jewish culture was really big on prayers and blessings and thanking God from where God had brought them, recognizing where they were and asking for God's blessings in the future. So there was a ritual in uh, Old Testament time that would take place before the couple entered their bedchamber, yes, in their bedroom. And um, this was very serious to Jewish culture where even the private area where the the you know, a husband and wife were to go later, that even that place would be blessed. Um, but later, as people started to progress and, you know, uh, grow in different beliefs, that ritual was later abandoned um, where, you know, people didn't necessarily come to the, the home or wherever and, and pray over the couple. But as you see in this particular picture, there's a hopa and it looks like a little canopy, but that canopy is meant to symbolize the bedchamber. And uh, as you see this Jewish couple and there's a, you know, like a beautiful fabric around them and that hopa is over top of them. And I'm sure there are some blessings being said over them um, and their future marriage. Okay, so as we go into the New Testament and beyond, we don't have a lot of information in the New Testament on how an actual wedding looked uh, or who got married, but we know that they did happen. We know that evidence because in uh, a lot of the epistles that the Apostle Paul wrote, there were questions that he addressed in his writings about marriage. He also addresses some questions of if there's a widow and the widow wants to get married again, can she remarry? OK, so we know somebody was getting married. But marriage was seen even after the early church has been established. It was seen as holy. It was seen as a sacrament of the church. It was special. And as we move into the 1500s, about 1549, English reformers kind of put a, um, I don't want to say different spin because it's not different, but their uh, their view of marriage was to control fleshly desires, right? Their view of marriage was uh, was simply a union between a husband and a wife, and to make children and to control 
for yourself if you <laughs> if you couldn't. Um, that's what so you start to see kind of like this stringent uh, kind of thing with with marriage coming coming into play. All right. And then on the left hand side, you see one of our African-American traditions of jumping the broom. Now let's take a transition and we're going to talk about Christian burials and funerals. In the Old Testament, there were many rituals that were performed for the, the dying person. And did you know that actual ceremonies uh, were performed at the burial site and there was an exact period of mourning? So what would happen in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament? Testament, you'll see this, is that family would gather around the dying person, okay, as that person is expiring. And after the person has died, uh, the family members would wash the body, they would anoint the body with olive oil or some type of oil, and they would dress the body for burial. So I want you to remember that you're like, well, why are they doing this? These are special rituals, uh, and you'll see a lot of Jewish um, undertones there that need to be done for the body, sacred things to be done for the body. There were no funeral homes, no embalming, and so funerals had to take place right away, so usually the next day. And bodies were also cremated um, as well. So sometimes, you know, that's something that people um, may not understand, that there was a practice of cremation uh, that was done. Now burials, so when the body is committed to the ground or put in the ground, did you know that ancient mourners would sing? They would lift up a song as the coffin would go into the ground for the person who, who was buried and may not have been cremated. There was a period of mourning that would follow the burial. So you'll see this a lot in Old Testament where somebody passes away and then it may say after that period or after her period of mourning or something, then this person could carry on. So there was a definite grieving process. In the Old Testament as well as New Testament, the belief that when the person passed away, that they were in a better place. Many of the funerals at that time focused on the person, okay? And then later on in Roman culture, um, there, and in Old Testament, there was food involved. There was some type of meal that would be involved after this ceremony. Later on, uh, funerals start to take a different turn and they start to give more encouragement to the living, to the family members, and admonishment to those people who may not be living right. So in burials also, Christian funerals are a way of making sure that we reverently and respectfully dispose of the corpse or the body, that we do what is right with this body, that we just don't mishandle it. Burials are, are also meant or they're intended to commend the deceased person back to God. So you will see in the prayers and the things that are said, the preacher, the pastor, or whoever is speaking is offering this uh, body back to God in faith and hope and in love. Okay. This is a very important stage in the grieving process, especially for the family because it gives the family comfort to know that this person is um, being commended back to God. And the Christian funeral also gives uh, a sense of hope and should also show God's love for all people. Now we spoke about this in our session. Stop and think. What aspects of Christian funerals or burials do we still see in the church, in the black church today? And how has that changed recently due to COVID-19? And so, as we said earlier, uh, a lot of things we've seen from antiquity to now. 
the uh, sometimes there's like a period of mourning for a particular family in different cultures. We may see it differently. OK. Uh, you may also see a gathering of family. OK, so uh, family members will gather at a particular home, um, you know, maybe like the night before uh, the funeral or something. Uh, remember how we said uh, before that person passes or even after uh, the family members come and you know there are things that they have to do another thing that we saw was the meal there's a common meal there that is shared by most folks who uh, come to that person's funeral after the burial there is some type of meal remember we saw that um, in the uh, roman culture and that's still done today also something that was mentioned in your book is the color black um, the color black is still used as a color of mourning, and I forget what page that is on. Okay, but for the most part, uh, that's on page 140, wearing um, all wearing black garments, um, they would proceed to the burial site. So we still see that today. So I want you to see that the meal, uh, the service, the gathering of family, the care that the family has for the deceased body, all of those things are still seen. Now, how has that changed recently due to COVID? Not being able to have the large gatherings like we would have usually had. Not being able maybe to eat. Um, my godfather passed in May and uh, we were like ready to have like the big funeral and get together because we're big family, but, you know, eating together wasn't a, a safe thing to do at that time. So the meals had to change or the way that we ate had to change. OK, um, remember another thing that changed was um, people coming together. So one of the things that we read in the beginning of this chapter when we talked about burials is how the family came together, maybe as the person was passing away and unfortunately due to COVID some some families had been robbed of that time they maybe they were not able to even be um, in the hospital or at the house um, as the person passed because they didn't want to spread COVID all right everybody now I also we talked about we ended here talking about the uh, the burials and funeral but I also want you to think about how some things are still true today with uh, weddings, okay, with the marriage ceremony. All right, everyone, once again, thank you so much for your patience, and I thank you for dealing with me and all of my glitches with technology. I will see you next week. Take care.